I want to talk about Hyper-V and exactly how it works. It seems like Hyper-V has become kind of, well, started off as kind of a magnet for myths. It's one of the most hard to understand products kind of in mainstream IT, which is strange because it's incredibly mainstream, but I guess something has to be the hardest thing to understand. But Hyper-V really isn't complex. It's pretty much like other things in the market. It's pretty much as you would expect it to be for what it's supposed to do. And yet there's a continuing number of myths around it. The biggest one is that it's a type two hypervisor. This is weird because we talk about what it is so often and it's always in a group of enterprise type one hypervisors in any list. And of course, type two hypervisors aren't considered viable for enterprise use or for production server use in any, any uh, situation. So why is Hyper-V looked at as a type two? So let's start with what are type one and type two hypervisors. A type one hypervisor is what we call bare metal. That means the hypervisor itself installs directly to your hardware, directly onto the server, and then all of your operating systems are VMs on top of the hypervisor, all of them, because only one thing can ever sit on the bare metal. That's just how computers work. A type two hypervisor is not something that installs directly to bare metal, but is an application that goes on top of an operating system. So a type two hypervisor would be installed after you had say Windows installed onto a server or a desktop. Then you install a type two hypervisor and then you can put additional VMs on top of that. So you have your initial operating system plus your VMs. So real quick examples, type one hypervisors, everyone should know these are the enterprise uh, family of VMware ESXi, Microsoft's Hyper-V, Zen and its sibling Zen server, which is really just a package of Zen, and KVM. And of course there's you know Beehive and some other research things going on, but those four rule the roost. They are the four that everyone knows and everybody talks about and they're the enterprise players. Then the type two space, we don't have enterprise players really because you don't run production systems in this way. We did a little bit like 15, 20 years ago, but that's over, right? We haven't done that in a long time. And of those that are still left, you have products like VMware Workstation, Fusion, uh, Parallels, and of course, Oracle's VirtualBox. All of those are great products. They all have places, but their place is not in the data center running your servers. They're on your desktop for developers or research or practice or whatever. They're all important, but they have very different use cases. So Hyper-V falls into this type one enterprise bare metal hypervisor category. So why is it confusing? Why do people sometimes feel, sometimes argue, are truly convinced that it's a type two? Well, the reason for this is that there's two installation methods for Hyper-V. One is that you simply go to Microsoft's, and this is confusing, it's TechNet Evaluation Center, that's where they handle the download. Just because it's a free product, that's where they put it. Don't be confused, it's the Evaluation Center, it's not an evaluation of Hyper-V. Hyper-V is free all the time, no matter what, Hyper-V is simply free. Download Hyper-V from the TechNet Evaluation Center, install it, you don't install any Windows, it's just Hyper-V, it's pretty straightforward, it must be a type one hypervisor. So most people are not confused there. Where they get confused is if you go into Windows and do a normal Windows install, it then gives you an option under most situations to install Hyper-V as a role. So it looks just like, well, I can install a web server as an application, I can install a database server as an application, I can install all these different things as roles on top of Windows. Hyper-V is one of them. It must be an application like everything else, so it must be a type two hypervisor. In many cases, what people think is that Hyper-V can be a type one or a type two hypervisor. This isn't realistically true because the technology to make something a type one and the technology to make something a type two are so dramatically different that while in theory, someone could make something that could morph between them, no one would. It's completely impractical. The technology to do so would be absurd and it wouldn't make sense because the use cases for one don't match the use cases of the other. What we want from one or the are just very different things. So don't expect that this will ever occur in the market, although obviously you could push for some technology that would somehow allow it to happen. It's not a natural thing. Um, so with uh, Hyper-V being installed as a role, it looks like it's an application. This is just misleading. It's not actually what happens. What actually happens is Windows, while it's running, installs Hyper-V to the disk. It modifies the bootloader and when the system reboots, it boots into Hyper-V and then immediately lo loads the Windows environment that you were just in as a virtual machine running on top of Hyper-V. 
Does that make sense? It converts what was a physical bare metal install of Windows into a virtual machine, but it passes that directly back to the graphical output of the, the graphics adapter so that as an end user, it appears exactly the same as if you had never installed Hyper-V, except now you can put VMs on the box. So it's easy to feel like Hyper-V is a type two if you're only looking at that aspect of it, but don't be misled. It is simply doing exactly what it should do, which is shift the location of what's running on bare metal and what's not, and booting one up as a VM. What's even trickier is that if you remove the Hyper-V role, it goes through, removes Hyper-V from the disk, changes the bootloader to point back to Windows, and boots back to what had just been a VM, but now physical again. The trick here is that Windows has the capability of booting without modification, either physically or as a VM under Hyper-V. So it's almost like a dual boot environment in that way that the technology for dual boot is there and you can either boot into Hyper-V and it kicks off that VM, or you boot directly into the, the storage of that VM and it turns into uh, a bare metal running Windows install. But under no conditions ever can Hyper-V run as an application. It can never be type two, it can never run on top of Windows or anything else. If Hyper-V is present, present, it is on the bare metal, it is a type one hypervisor, there is no exception to this. People will say it all the time, it is simply not true. Hyper-V did not invent this, and this is not done to be confusing. This comes from the Zen world, um, and at some point it even came from the ESX world long ago, but we'll ignore that because that's changed so much I don't want to confuse people with VMware's current ecosystem. But if you were to use Zen today, not Zen server, because that's all packaged and you don't see what's going on under the hood, but if you're working with traditional Zen, the installation method for this is exactly the same as what I just described with Hyper-V as a role. You install an operating system such as uh, CentOS or Fedora or OpenSUSE Tumbleweed or Ubuntu. You take that, you go in and you install Zen on top of that, and it looks just the same like Zen becomes a type two hypervisor that's an application on top of Linux, but it isn't. It is doing the exact same thing and did this a decade before, not really, but a, many years before Hyper-V did it. So Hyper-V simply copied a standard industry model for deployment. So what Zen does is it installs to the hard drive, the bootloader is switched to point to Zen, and the environment that just installed Zen is moved into a VM. It's called the DOM0 because it's the VM that has the special access to control Zen and gets access to the keyboard and the mouse and the screen and all that. Everything else becomes just a VM in the background. But that environment, that DOM0, is still a VM. Make no doubt about it. It is not running on the bare metal. Zen is a bare metal hypervisor, type 1 all the time, you cannot mix them. So that is why Hyper-V is the way it is, that's why it looks the way it does, and why people often get confused, and why that one particular myth uh, tends to stick around, even though if we look at how it works, we should know that it can't be true. It just seems so obvious, how could it not be? So thanks for joining me, I hope that this was informational for you, and please remember to like and subscribe, and as always, I will be posting a link to this over in the Mangolossi.it technical community, where you can discuss, ask questions, questions, argue, uh, find out more about Hyper-V and other technologies. 